G'day Legends, welcome back to the Dora Project. In this video, we're going to outline how we built a little battery cage for our deep cycle battery. Now a little while ago, James and I went down to Bem River and whilst we also destroyed our video camera, which was very upsetting, we had a little bit of trouble with our motor guide conking out in the wind and the rain. Anyway, it wasn't actually the motor guide's fault, it was the battery's fault being able to rattle around like this. So what we had to do is build a cage where it couldn't move anymore. Anyway, with batteries on the forefront of our mind, we went ahead and actually did a bit of maintenance to our cranking battery as well. The isolating switch at the back here has a little bit of corrosion on the inside because the housing isn't actually sealed. So with some dielectric grease, we could cover up those terminals just to minimise any salt water contact to these terminals. Anyway, super simple. Wear gloves when you use dielectric grease because it's pretty nasty stuff. But also, we were thinking about rattling batteries and I absolutely hate the battery straps that come with these battery boxes. They're really shit and you really can't get into the battery in a pinch. So these are the battery straps that I'm talking about, the ones that you have to turn over and you feed back through. I absolutely hate them with a burning passion. But uh, we had to find a solution. And you've got to think of stuff while you eat. Anyway, back to it. I went to Bunnings. And at Bunnings there's heaps of webbing and buckle solutions that you can use. Now, this is going to be probably very basic and very self-explanatory, but we're going to go through all the bits and pieces that we did to Dora. The crux of it is really having a quick release solution to getting into the battery box. That's the whole reason why we got these buckles. Now, it's really easy. You cut the webbing to length, you burn the ends so they don't fray, and you make a loop. I really don't know what more there is to it, but um, look at that. It's a, it's a strap with a buckle. You guys get the gist. I'm just reusing the same little loops that came with the original straps. That's probably the only thing that's good about them. And there you go. Look at this quick release action. So good. Oh my god. Anyway, to the real nitty gritty is this battery. Like I was saying before, this thing could just rattle around like crazy in there. It really had no securing method. I had it on top of this foam pad with this slip resistant stuff, but that really didn't do shit. There's no flat surface in here, and really there was probably a risk of putting a corner of the battery through the aluminium floor. So we really had to find a solution. A lot of people have been making these things out of aluminium angle, and so there's no reason to go against the grain, and we're gonna give that a go too. I don't have a welder, so the solution here is actually gonna be riveted together. With our very accurate measurements, we started marking up, but in that we realized that we have no tools. I don't have a square, I don't have any of these clamp things, I didn't have the right grinding discs, I really didn't have the right stuff. And you can tell I don't have the correct cutting surface either, but I managed to cut away anyway. Mr. Krabs came in, plonked it in there, and really, how hard is it to measure a box? Again, we were talking about rivets. And one thing that's probably worth mentioning if you've never done this before is that just keep in mind that a rivet gun has a maximum diameter in terms of how far a rivet can be set from a vertical edge. If you drill a hole too close to the vertical edge, the rivet gun might not actually get into that position. That's just trial and error. You guys will work that out yourself. After making the base up, placing it into the position, uh, it looks fantastic. But I need to work out a way of supporting it to the bench seat. Now imagine here that the yellow battery is the bench seat. I have these vertical uprights and I'm going to screw that into the bench seat. But that's really not going to do anything without a gusset. Look at me actually using a bench to cut things. It's so much easier than a stool. Another quick tip for you guys who haven't tried this sort of thing before is use WD-40 as a lubricant when you're drilling stuff. It just makes life easier on your drills and you don't have to worry so much. Now here, I'm trying to use a five millimeter stainless steel rivet. It's a lot of work, especially with a hand tool. If you've got a pneumatic gun, much easier. After making the first upright and gusset, it's worth having a go and seeing that everything fits. So after doing the upright, we went in and made sure that everything looked hunky-dory and it looked great. So I went ahead and cut the other uprights. 
Now, this only took me about a day to do all by myself. It's, it's really quite a simple process as long as you get the measurements correct uh, and you have the tools at hand. After you've got the two uprights and the box all framed up, just make sure that your battery still fits and it should, but just be wary that you have your rivet heads facing the right direction and you don't have the tail end pointing into your box. So the frame's gonna do a great job of supporting the battery, but I did wanna put a little bit of extra support in there so that it wasn't going to come in contact with the floor. I cut another length of angle and what this would do would span between the floor ribs. It gives you another horizontal surface for the battery tray to sit on top of. As you can see, it goes straight on top and it just doesn't point contact on those ribs anymore. This horizontal support got riveted into position and those rivets had some depth gel in there as well, just to stop that galvanic corrosion. Now we can dress up this cage a little bit. So similarly to what we did before, we're going to make a strap around the battery. We riveted the strap into place because we didn't have any more of those hoops and we wanted a low profile solution. Fender washers did a great job of supporting it and really it's pretty self-explanatory. I also wanted to protect the battery casing from the aluminium heads so I got some rubber matting and I cut that to size and placed it in the bottom there. It just looks a lot neater now. Again the battery goes straight in, it's great for a check fit and look the straps long enough and it just a longer strap is really handy because it just gives you a little bit more handle on the strap to pull it tight. The uprights were screwed into position into the bench seat using self-tapping screws, again using tap gel, and I also used some self-tapping screws into that horizontal truss as well. And that's pretty much how I did it. There's nothing else to do other than to test it with my full weight of my body, because that's the clear and obvious thing to do. So after one foot, the second foot, and look, I'm standing there. There's my hand, I'm holding the camera in the other hand. This ain't done dynamo and uh yeah that's it so anyway very basic if you enjoyed it please subscribe because of, i'm a youtube channel person guy and i hate this anyway goodbye see you later Yeah.